an advertisement for Prozac, it's also an advertisement for the idea that depression is a disease. And I think that's uh, uh, very obviously very beneficial to the drug companies. At the end of your book, um, your final chapter is The Magnificence of Normal. What does that mean? Well, in, in my book, I try to grapple with the possibility that there might be something redemptive about large groups of people thinking of themselves as sick, uh, as is what's happening right now if 20 percent of the population is depressed. And I visited with some people who take that line. Unfortunately, the, what they do with their collective action is they decide to treat themselves as chronically ill people and to demand better drugs. Um, and to demand nothing but the restoration of normalcy in, in what they consider to be their brain illness. Now, I don't mean to, uh, to criticize people who are really struggling to just get by every day, but for most of us, the idea that the normal is what's magnificent is a problem because it gives very little room for uh, challenging or questioning the status quo. So, in the end, we can see that this idea that depression is a biochemical illness, no matter how the intentions, what the intentions were, which were probably good intentions, it doesn't matter because that idea is going to favor uh, the status quo no matter what we do if there's not built into it some understanding of the way our engagements with the world uh, contribute to the way that we're uh, unhappy. What about antidepressants in children? I don't know much about antidepressants in children, except I know that it's, a, it's an ex science experiment that everybody's involved in right now, that nobody's actually been asked to consent to. We don't really understand how Prozac works in grown-ups. We know that if you put it into the system, you get a better mood out of the, out of the system after uh, in many cases. But with children, we have no idea what constantly tweaking their brain metabolism. We don't know what the effects of that are going to be on a brain that's still developing. So while there may be situations in which it can be uh, valuable, I think that we're moving very, very fast, considering we know very little about how the drugs work in the brain, and we know very little about the uh, developing brain. So you put those two things together, that's a lot of ignorance. Gary Greenberg, you are a psychotherapist. You have been through trials yourself. But when you were researching manufacturing depression's secret history of modern disease, what most surprised you? I think the thing that most surprised me was to discover just how uh, how easily ferreted out this history is. I mean, if you sit down and you look at the way medicine has developed for the last 150 years, while you probably couldn't have predicted it from 1850, looking back, it's a, it's, it's a complex history, but it's a very clear line from the first discovery of magic bullet drugs in the late 19th century and the idea that our diseases are suffering can be understood as medical diseases to the idea that this kind of suffering can be understood as a biomedical disease. I thought I mean, the book was really hard to write, don't get me wrong, I, I earned my money, but it was really also a, um, a, a surprisingly straight line. It was how, how easily or quickly things fell into place to show that history. And I think that that's important for people who might read the book, because when you read it, you see how you've really arrived on a wave that's been building for 150 years when you get to your doctor's office and he starts to talk to you about your depression. You've really you're really at the, at the end of a long line of events that, if you know about them, they really change the way that whole experience goes and the way you understand what your demoralization is about and the way you understand being told that you're depressed. Gary Greenberg, I want to thank you for being with us. Manufacturing Depression, The Secret History of a Modern Disease is his book that does it for the show. Very happy birthday to my nephew, Jasper, who's hitting the dead, double digits, 10 years old. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us. This is Democracy Now!, Democracy Now!